Although Sarah and I grew up knowing we were half Italian, we took this for granted when we were young. Growing up and moving away from our family roots in California made it easy to feel distant from our heritage and the life that our Italian family once lived. For many children of Italian immigrants, this happens. We grow up, we work to make our own way, and we grow disconnected. One thing that never left us, however, was our deep appreciation for food. And isn't food the thing that so often connects us to a sense of home and family? As young children, we lived just 20 minutes away from our Italian grandparents. Mom recalls her dad stopping by to drop off peppers or cucumbers from his garden regularly. But a few years later, our family moved 30 minutes farther away, and sadly, before Luke and I were 10 and 12 years old, both of our Italian grandparents had passed away. As my own life journey progressed into marriage and family, my husband and I settled in Colorado. After a health crisis hit, we realized we needed to make some big dietary changes and significantly increase our fresh vegetable consumption. But our finances were tight at the time and we couldn't exactly afford to become Whole Foods shoppers. I asked my husband one day, what if I dug up the whole front lawn and planted a garden? I'd grown a tomato plant or two in the years past, but that year was different. I really wanted to grow enough food to make a difference in our food budget. I didn't know much about gardening, so I bought books, I reached out to neighbors for tips, and I ordered seed. One day, walking past my piano, I stopped to look at a framed picture of my grandma Scarpenti, standing proudly in front of her large garden and her tall green beans. I felt so sad that I couldn't ask her questions and learn from her. I all of a sudden realized, wait a minute, I'm Italian. This is in my blood, and I have no relatives to teach me how to do this. If you go back a couple generations in any family, you'll find people who knew how to grow their own food. And if you've got Italian relatives, they definitely had a vegetable garden. You remember Papa bringing over cucumbers and Yeah, as a cooking. kid, I remember Papa's garden. I remember he'd grow squash and zucchini and little fuzzy lemon cucumbers. Um, and Mom would make you know, a cucumber salad with tomato and basil. And we still make cucumber tomato salads all the time because that's I love that fresh flavor. I believe that starting a garden is one of the best ways to connect with your family heritage, history, and story. If you are lucky enough to have older living relatives, ask them about their favorite recipes and what they remember growing in their gardens that their family used to tend. These are the fuzzy Italian cucumbers, the Caracello Barese variety. I order this seed from Italy. This is the type of cucumber that Papa used to grow. Here's one of the babies. It's amazing that we can now order unique vegetable varieties from heirloom seed companies all over the world. We can be grateful for people who protect and grow old seed, keeping alive the unique foods that were loved and cherished by families for generations. Of course, I'm partial to the ones that come from Italy. Zucchini, everybody loves growing zucchini. Most people end up with so much of it that they have to give it to their neighbors, which is true. Um, this little variety right here, I have two Italian varieties. This one's called Romanesco, which has this gorgeous star shape when you slice through it, really firm. And then this one over here is called Strato d'Italia, which is long and has stripes on it. And it's so pretty. Nothing like the grocery store zucchini at all. It's so much better. You can get these seeds online. When you're supposed to pick garlic is when you have about four or five layers of the outer layer that have dried out. So you count the leaves that have dried out. We have one, two, three, four that's turning brown. So then you know that there's enough mature outer layers on the garlic. This is a, a really beautiful Italian variety that we order called Music Aria. So then we rinse all these off and then we'll go ahead and cure them for several weeks to a month. But this is a soft neck variety. There's, we, have, we grow soft neck and hard neck. This variety is really big and beautiful. Uh, hard neck, you get the garlic scapes off the top that you can harvest in the spring. Soft neck is a variety that you can braid if you wanted to braid it. But they both have different unique qualities about them. Broccoli usually grows best at the coast because it loves like cool, foggy air at night. But we grow here in Colorado where it's hot 
in the summers, we grow a variety called De Chico, which is an Italian variety that can handle the heat. And instead of growing one central head like you see at the grocery store, it grows these smaller, kind of like broccolini that you're used to. So as long as you keep picking them, they will just keep coming. So this is what we like to grow here. Probably the most exciting garden discovery was when I learned that our mom's maiden name, Kukutsa, was actually a variety of squash. It had been cultivated in the south of Italy for centuries. Planting that seed and harvesting my first Kukutsa squash was an emotional moment. How many of my southern Italian ancestors had done the same? This is, right here, is, this is the female flower. See, because there's a fruit on it. Um, oh. And then this, let me find, what, at night time, oh, here we go. This up here is a male flower. Oh, that's the fruit. So this has no, this, so you have to get, in order to, in order to get a fruit that will actually fruit, you have to, the pollen has to go from here and be, you know, pollinated in here. So at this stage, there's so many bees that almost all of them are pollinated. So this is, this is a female because she's got the little, all the little yep. nubs. Yep. That's the fruit. And then the other one is just one little tiny. Mm -hmm. huh. yeah, exactly. Oh, it is heavy. <laughs> Italian food is one of the world's best, but its magic is in its simplicity. The best dishes are often made from just a handful of ingredients, but the quality of these simple ingredients is what matters. Italians care about how fresh the eggs are because that will affect the flavor of the tenderness of the pasta. Nothing compares to vegetables and fruit picked in season, pulled fresh from the soil, there is no comparison to what sits on grocery store shelves. This is my herb garden. We have all of our thyme, oregano, sage. Here in Colorado, I have to replant rosemary, but in the coastal temperate climate, rosemary will get huge. Um, but every Italian needs an herb garden, in my opinion. So it's a great place to start, actually. If you just want to grab a pot and plant a few herbs, some essentials, of course, oregano is so is so crucial to Italian cooking. Um, I love having fennel. I love using mint in different things. Mint, of course, will go crazy. So it's nice actually to keep it in a pot so it doesn't take over everything else. Ultimately, the food that we eat can connect us to the ones who came before. Growing and preparing it can deepen our love for family. Many of our ancestors left Italy, crossed the sea for America, looking for opportunity and a better life for their children. Although our grandparents didn't have much land, they used the space they had on their downtown lot in San Jose to grow a large, thriving garden. I am inspired by their resourcefulness and by other immigrant families who taught me to use what I have and to make things stretch. We just were picking some Swiss chard, and this is something that connects us to our family, one of our family stories. Um, we don't have a lot of recipes that were shared, so anything that we can get from talking to our, my mom, our mom, about recipes is special. And she always told us that Grandma Scarpenti from the north of Italy always put Swiss chard in her chicken soup, and that gave it a distinct flavor. So that's why I've always grown Swiss chard, just because of that one story. Love Swiss chard. Ooh, that's, that's a good job. I love this book. I've been wanting to share this with you, Luke, but also I think any other half Italian or anyone with Italian heritage would really enjoy this. This book is called The Unprejudiced Palette, Classic Thoughts on Food and the Good Life by Angelo Pellegrini. Angelo Pellegrini was an immigrant to America. This was written in 1948, so it's an oldie, but it's such a classic for anyone who loves food, and of course, Italians love food. In describing a particularly affectionate relationship, the Italians say, Siamo amici come il pane e il formaggio. We are as intimate as bread and cheese. And then he says, A thick slice of crisp French bread, a thin slice of one of these cheeses, and a glass of wine is still the luncheon that binds me close to my ancestors. <laughs> Soon it will be our children's turn to decide if they want to stay connected to this simple but rich Italian heritage they have been given. What's your favorite Italian meal set or favorite Italian food? Probably pasta, specifically linguine with clams or a really good meat pasta is good. Nice. Bella, what is your favorite vegetable that we grow in our garden? A Swiss chard? Um, 
the kakuza squash is really good and I like the the string beans, the really long string beans. Mm -hmm. Or the Italian squash that are like skinny and long. Mm -hmm. Those are really good. Those are good ones. Regardless of your family history, it's never too late to begin planting seeds of connection to your heritage through food. For us, we are hopeful about the seeds we've planted in our children. With time, we feel sure that those seeds will sprout, take root, and grow.